Did you just get a B Savior U5 dongle and you're having a hard time connecting it up to your PlayStation 5 so that it works? This is the video that you've been looking for. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. So we've already walked through the B-Savior U5 dongle, we've unpacked it, we've tested it, we've done a whole bunch of stuff, but the number one question a lot of you guys have been having is it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work with the controller, it doesn't work with keyboard and mouse, I'm not sure what to do. Well, let's walk through a couple things that I do whenever I'm using my U5 dongle so that it works every single time, or if it doesn't work, I at least know where to start in that troubleshooting process. So I'm gonna walk you through all of that right now. Now for this video, we are using this guy. Now this is a keyboard mouse adapter. It allows you to use a keyboard and mouse on games that weren't originally designed for keyboard and mouse, such as this, which is Rainbow Six Siege. Now this will also work on Call of Duty, it'll work on Fortnite, and it'll give you some extra perks. Now you don't have to use one like this. A lot of people are using like a Zim Matrix or a Zim Apex or something like that. This one is just an inexpensive one that you can get on Amazon. This particular one came as a kit. It came with this mouse, it came with this keyboard, and it came with this adapter for like $30, so it's like super cheap. So if it doesn't work, then no big deal, right? But it does work. So we're gonna show you how it works. Now, you also know that the U5 dongle allows you to use your non-PlayStation controller on PlayStation 5 games. This will unlock our PXN controller to use that one on there. It'll unlock my Xbox controller. It'll unlock a lot of different controllers. Compatibility is varied and a lot of people are reporting it doesn't work with this, it doesn't work with that. But I wonder how many people actually would be able to use the controller they like if they follow the steps for connection exactly like I'm gonna show in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, the first thing you want to do is take your PlayStation 5 controller and you want to make sure it's off. You want to connect with the USB-C connection and then you want to plug it into your PlayStation 5 like this. Now, what you want to do is just press the PS button, go to the controller setting right there and then click on DualSense Wireless Controller and then you're just gonna go to Controller Settings. This is the fastest, easiest way to get here. Now, we want to look specifically for here, Communication Method, Use USB. Probably yours is set to use Bluetooth. So even if it's plugged in, it still uses Bluetooth and then just charges over the USB connection. You must, you must, you must switch this setting to say Use USB Cable. Okay, it has to say that. Now, even though it says that, I can unplug this. It'll say, oh, you're disconnected. And then when I push this, it'll connect again, but this time you do not see the USB signal there. So I'm gonna show you guys both with USB and without USB. Now, even if I plug in the USB, well, in this case, it switched back to USB, but just to be safe, I usually go to accessories, I go to turn off, and then while it's all wired, I'll push it again, make sure it comes on with the USB connection and it's working, okay? That's step number one. If you do not get exactly what you just saw here, you do not continue, you have to test that. The next thing we wanna do is connect our B-Savior dongle and just make sure that that's working. Now, the first thing you're gonna see is I have an extra USB cord. Now, because I'm using an adapter, this thing needs extra power. So on the top here, there's a USB-C port. I'm gonna plug this in, just like this. And then you're gonna plug this into a separate USB powered source. It could be a USB brick, it could be your computer, it could be anything. In my case, I'm gonna plug it into just an extra port on my computer to give it some extra power. Now, before I continue too far, this B Savior U5 dongle, it came with a tiny white USB cord. Throw that in the garbage. Trust me, throw it completely in the garbage. The reason why you're gonna throw it in the garbage is that is USB power only. So it does not do USB communication. If you're using that at any point in your connection, you're probably gonna have problems because it's easy to get it confused with a regular 
USB cable. So in this case, I'm using my own USB-C cable to power this up. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do, unplug the controller, take the port that came out and plug it into my B-Savior. So now you have this connection. I have power on the B-Savior and I have the PlayStation 5 controller. Now this plugs into the side or the top port. Do not plug it in the back port, just the top port. Then we're gonna plug this back in to the PlayStation 5, just like that. And then when I push the PS button on the controller, it should say USB again. If it does not show that USB symbol, then you are not connected wired and this will not work. You must have the connection just like this. And if I test it, so this has a USB connection through the U5 dongle. Now we are ready to connect anything we want, anything at all, and it'll work. So I'm gonna show you guys. So case in point, this is the controller adapter. So this converts mouse and keyboard, where's my cord here, to work through the PlayStation 5. So on this particular dongle, I'm gonna plug in my mouse. That's my mouse. I'm gonna plug in my keyboard. This is my keyboard right here, like this. And then I'm going to use the cord that came with it. Now, quick note about the cord. So this uses a USB-C cord. Okay, as you already saw, we threw out the white cord that came with the B-Savior. There's no guarantee that this USB cord is a data two-way transfer capable USB cord. The best way to test your cord would be to swap it with this one. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna unplug this. The controller's disconnected. Now, I know that this cord is a two-way data capable cord. So I'm gonna stick this here because I've verified the cord works. What I don't know is if this cord works. So I'm gonna use this cord on my PlayStation 5 like this. I'm gonna plug this in right here like that. Now, if it's a good cord, I'll push PS and then I missed it. But here you can see this, it shows the USB symbol. That means that this is a USB connection. If I unplug this, then my controller doesn't work. And then if I push the PS button, watch it's gonna connect again, and then that will change. It won't show USB. In fact, we know that both cords are USB cords. This works still, as you can see here, right? Now, for the magical part, all I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna unplug or anything, I'm just gonna plug this into the back of there. Now in this case, this one lights up blue, it blinks for a second until it establishes connection, then it goes solid, and now, I have a keyboard and a mouse. So there's my mouse and here's my keyboard. And this is Rainbow Six Siege. This is the demo to just, there we go, look at that. Okay, there you go. Rainbow Six Siege with keyboard and mouse. Now, how does it work with Mousetrap? I don't know because I don't have the patience to get through just the demo on this stupid thing. But that is for that. Now, what if you have your favorite PXN controller or an Xbox controller? Let's try it, okay? I actually had trouble last time, so I'm gonna unplug this. And then I should be able to just plug this guy in here. Look at that, there we go. So here I am using my PXN controller. Now this one's got some crazy accelerated swing because of the settings that I did, but there you can see. Now, I mean, I don't know why you'd want to use this. It does have back buttons here, and I don't think I've mapped them. Oh, this one apparently is crouch. No, this one's crouch. I thought this one might have been jump, but it's probably X. So this is the PXN controller plugged wired. Now, you can take this off and you can plug your Xbox controller into this. You can plug anything you want into this and it will work. Now, a couple things that you're going to want to know. First of all, up date the B-Savior U5 dongle. If you're not sure how to do that, I've got a different video that walks you through exactly how to update it. It can get a little confusing, but that'll be very, very helpful for you. But this worked right out of the box without any issues. Make sure you go through all of the steps exactly as you saw, especially some controllers use extra power. So even though you don't always need this power wire going into the U5 to power it up, you can easily overpower the PlayStation 5 main USB power supply and it will shut the port down and then the whole thing will stop working. It can also create some erratic behavior. So if you want to use keyboard and mouse especially, you're gonna wanna use that extra power supply. So I encourage you guys to go back and retest the controllers that you said were not working following the method that I just showed you right now. 
It's pretty easy once you know what you're doing. And once this is all set up, it should work every time. But the key that you're looking for is, does this show a USB symbol there? And if it does, then it should work. If it doesn't, you gotta go back and do some troubleshooting. I hope that helped. Lots more videos coming up. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.